Yes, uh, thank you. Welcome to my talk. So who am I? Um, I'm Christian Nielsen. Uh, I'm the, now the chief architect of replication in the foundation. And uh, I was working as a developer in MySQL and later MariaDB for almost 20 years now. I uh, actually did a number of different things. I was uh, I did the first uh, the push build, which was the first continuous integration in MySQL. Uh, uh, I did uh, a non-blocking API for the connector, but uh, most of it and the thing I'm doing now is especially replication. Uh, yes, so, and by the way, feel free to just interrupt me with questions. I really like it when people, it's a more two-way two communication, there's just one way, but, so feel free to ask questions anyway. Okay, so uh, Anna asked me, to give a talk and I thought, what should I talk about? And I really wanted to, I decided to, to go on this. Um, so what is it that makes replication uh, so great? My readable replication archive was praising it. Monty said we had the most, uh, the best replication and, uh, and users are using it really a lot. Uh, so so what is, uh, why, what's so great about it? What is it really that makes it like, what's the core? Or uh, you can put it in another way. Uh, how, replication is actually quite fragile. We, again and again, we see users, they're running replication, a slave stops with an error, replication breaks, and they actually, the worst is they don't really know why and how to fix it, and is it actually them that did something wrong, or is it the server? It is actually fragile. So why use it? <laughs> there must be some reason, right? And, um, okay, so, so why is, what is this reason? And I've, uh, from many years, uh, thinking and working about replication, I'm convinced that this, the, the, core, the core thing is the flexibility. MariaDB replication and inherited from MySQL, of course, replication is it's, it's really flexible. We have this logical replication. I don't know if you're familiar with this uh, physical versus logical replication. In logical replication, we're not tied to specific, like we're not replicating, take these 10 bytes in, in the table space and the master, we're going to do the same right in the, on the slave. So we're not tied to having the same version on each. Uh, and on the master and the slave, not even the uh, same major version. Uh, we can even uh, think about uh, replicating, Monty asked me about replicating between uh, MySQL versions and MariaDB versions to do migrations, um, uh, which is actually already kind of advanced. Uh, uh, we can also do, uh, you can just set up uh, your, you're not restricted to having a specific configuration like you have one master, one slave, you can just make the, the servers replicate from each other in actually arbitrary networks. Uh, so many things that just sit here. So it's really flexible. There really are a lot of things that you can do. And I think that's, that's really what is the value for the, for the user. You select a database, that's a big commitment. Because it's not cheap, even though you can migrate, it's not cheap to, to change, right? And, and you want to kind of be sure that it solves your problem, not just now, but also in the future. And, and replication is very important in this world of many servers and cloud and networks and so on. And, and replication is there and it's very flexible. You can actually, th you, you don't have to use all the replication, right? And actually, hopefully, <laughs> really hopefully, you are not going to use all of the things that replication provides, even though I can tell you I have no advanced users that are doing things that are very complex and frankly, very scary when I'm the one that has to make it work, right? But Like star replication. Yeah. Uh, but it's there, so you can actually, I think this is the killer feature, uh, one of the killer features of MariaDB, but why, the reason why replication is one of the killer features of MariaDB is that it's, it's there, and if you have some problem in the future involving replication, you can be pretty sure that MariaDB will, will have a way to do that uh, in replication because it's so flexible. But it may not be, you know, very easy to do that way, and you have some, so it can be, painful and uh, I think many users have seen this. You get this error in the error log, uh, slave is broken and it says, it says fix the problem and restart the slave. So fix the problem. <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. And that is uh, the problem that we have this, uh, this happens too much for users and there's uh, different reasons for that but it's really, I think the challenge is, the great thing about read replication, we can do so many things, it's so flexible. The, the challenge is it's already now too fragile, so let's make it better. And also, as we add more things, how can we avoid getting it even worse? Um, right. And, and so, so that's kind of a high level, maybe a little bit abstract. Now, 
I'm going to go through some things just to talk about what what is actually replication can do that actually hard to do. So one of the things we can do, which is probably not unique, but it's it's quite special in in, in MariaDB and inherent for MySQL replication, is that we can do statement based replication. What does it mean? So uh, so logical replication means that we are transferring not the disk writes, the individual bytes on the disk, which means nothing to anybody. It means we are uh, replicating the values. When you're doing, you could like when you do statement based replication, you are actually replicating the, you're sending the SQL statement. So the classic example here is you have a big table and you do a query. This is a 50 character or something query, right? It's a simple query. But you're going to update most of the rows in a big table, say it's a billion rows. So if you do what you call row-based replication, you're sending all the updates. So you're updating a billion rows. So now you have a simple query and it's going to send how many gigabytes of data across the network to your slave. And that's kind of Dumb, right? Because it's a 50 on the server, so only 50 characters. And when you have statement based replication, you can just send the query. And so that's obviously why I don't do that. But it's very tricky, right? It's very, very hard to make sure that you have all these queries running in parallel on the master and they run in a different order. I mean, at least not the same interleaving on the, on the slave. And it still works. And so much effort over the years went into, especially the, the inner DB uh, locking uh, table, I mean, row level locks to make this work. And it's really complicated. Uh, and some, it's often heard that, well, sometimes that's a problem and developers say, can we, can just, users can just use row-based replication, right? It's much easier, but you get this uh, factor of a 10 billion slowdown, right? For the network. So I think that's a, at least it's something that's very advanced. Another thing I would mention is, uh, so, so, Replication is not just important that the slave works and doesn't break. It's also important that it can keep up with the master. It has to be as fast as the master because we are doing all these performance tests on the master uh, suspension can scale more and more. But it doesn't really help if the master can run twice as fast, but the slave is behind. Then it doesn't work. So, so performance is, is, is really important. And, and, and I think this uh, that MariaDB has since 10.1, I think, is uh, the optimistic parallel application. I think that's uh, really a big success. Uh, so optimistic parallel. So basically, the, in, in the old days and for many years, the uh, replication was single-threaded. You just applied one query after the other, and of course, at some point, this doesn't work anymore. Uh, more and more cores, and the master is getting faster, so you have the slave lag. And there are different ways to solve it. And MySQL mostly did it by. So, so, so the, clear, you, on the slave, you just want to run the, the, the queries, I mean, the events. You want to run through transactions in parallel. Uh, and the problem is, how do you make sure that it's correct? Maybe there's a, some conflict. And you can do, th the classic way to do it is to try to analyze. You have these transactions. OK, these are not overlapping, so we can do them in parallel. And it's a natural way to do it. But I think it's, it just turns out that there are so many corner cases. Always you have some corner case, uh, and you. I think the, what, what we have in optimistic parallel application, we do it because you have these corner cases. So there's a little bit of thing here. You have this, so you hope there were not conflict with the conflict anyway, and then you have to deal with that somehow. So in optimistic parallel application, we do it. Uh, we say, okay, there are going to be conflicts. So we're just going to run everything in parallel. Just start the transaction in parallel. But then if there is a conflict, we detect it and we handle it. So if it's a conflict, two transactions are conflicting, we find out which one should uh, win, and then we roll back the other one complete the, the, the one that can now run, and then afterwards we can do the other one. And that seems to work very well in practice. And the great thing about this is all of this concurrency is, is, is so tricky to get right, but the optimistic parallel application doesn't introduce any new things. It doesn't need to change how InnoDB does locking. It doesn't need to I implement complex, like a separate logic, like you don't have a separate logic trying to predict how will InnoDB locking work when you run the query by predicting that whether it will conflict or not. It's just the same mechanisms. So that's, I think, is why it was successful. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's one of the, the others. We have the strict committer, and I think that's key. Uh, so we, we, have, we can run things in parallel, but we always commit in the same order on the master, on the slave that we did on the master. And this is what makes it correct. It's actually the same uh, principle that's done in Galera, I think. Uh, yeah. So that makes it also transparent to the application. You never see on the slave that some state of the database that didn't exist on the master. 
Yeah. So that's yeah. A comment that you know, but the audience doesn't know. So one really nice thing with the bid per uh, is that if you come from different streams, the uh, slaves knows about it, and you can uh, apply those in different order. So, for example, if you try with catalogs, and you have four catalog streams like we saw in the previous slide, all of those will never conflict with each other, and they will be applied without conflict detection between each other. So that actually will make catalogs work really good. So this is really great. Uh, let's skip this one for time. But so, so, so why is this hard? It sounds so good, right? Just run things in parallel and just be flexible and just have logical replication. I just wanted to give one like technical example, uh, why this was hard. So, so, so now I'm going to do a, uh, th this was a bug uh, in InnoDB and it was triggered by parallel application, even though the bug is actually also uh, there without parallel application. And so you should see here, we have a, actually a simple case. We have four transactions and they're all working on the same row. It's just a single row, pk equals 10. So just imagine we have these four transactions. First there's a transaction, and, and they run in parallel. So they start one, they, uh, they're running in parallel. So first the uh, one is doing an update. Okay, we're updating the row to something. Then the second one, but it's, not, it's still running, it's not committed yet. So then the second one starts, it wants to delete the row again, to delete the, the update. So it has to wait, right? When you do an update on a row, it takes a log inside. You know, be, now we deleted it. Now there's a, no, uh, so now the, 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 the fourth transaction, but it runs now, it starts now, but it commits later. It also wants to delete the same row. So now we have two deletes waiting for this, this one to commit. And then there's an insert of the same row. Again, you cannot insert when you have an update pending, not committed. So you have all of these, you have this update running and then you have three waiting. Okay, so, so, so then uh, the update commits. Now the row has been changed. And then the delete commits. So now the row is gone. It's deleted, right? We had another delete, but then the insert happens to wake up, you know, it gets to the lock. So we have the update, the row is updated, deleted, and then it's inserted again. This doesn't fail, right? Because we just deleted it. It's not a duplicate up, key update. And then only after that, the, the delete, remember the delete ran <laughs> before the insert, but now the insert is committed. So the delete, of course, sees the insert and the delete should delete the row. But the bug was because when the delete took the lock, the row was, was, uh, was not there. It was a different row, right? <laughs> And this was a different row. It's an old row. This is the new row. And there was actually a bug there. So this is a corner case. And why do you think it's interesting? Because, of course, you always have bugs and it was fixed. But it's clear to, I think it's very easy to understand why this was not found before parallel application, right? Because it's not very often that users will de delete their rows before they insert them, right? So, and it's just, even if you have just a single, uh, single row update, it's, it's just complicated and, and, and things are break. And that's why the flexibility we have with all these things, so let's go back to the high picture, the flexibility just means that the problem is, is hard. It's a coupling th complex thing and that's part of the reason why we get these perceived fragile, uh, fragile system. If, it, if this would be a scan with T4, it may be that it has uh, already scanned past T, at T3 so it will not delete anything. But on the other hand, if we have, if we have a row-based replication, that will ensure that it doesn't happen. I think this is a statement-based replication, and it goes back to that. The problem is that this is a row, the order they started in, but they will f f commit in the different orders of the bin log. You will see update, delete, insert, delete. So you better delete the row that was inserted here, right? Because on both machines, right? But we will only do, we'd only do it on the slave. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's, um, I think it's really great that MariaDB uh, replication is so flexible and so useful to users, and that's my motivation for working on it, basically. <laughs> but I don't want it to break. <laughs> and that was uh, something I worked on, like, since one year ago, a little bit more than a year ago, I fixed the box. That's the first. But uh, uh, there are also different two other aspects, because, as I said, the performance is also important. If the performance is not good enough, then the slave will not be able to keep up, and then it's actually also broken. So performance is actually quite important. And then we have this flexibility. It's so flexible, users can easily break replication for themselves. And it's kind of the part of the game that, that gives you flexibility to do two things. But, but it's, and that's actually the tricky thing to manage because 
when, when the application breaks, sometimes it's because of a bug, but sometimes it's because the user did something wrong. And the boundary, like there's a gray zone, you know, what is correct, what is wrong. And, and, and somehow we need to navigate so that the users can understand uh, how to use it and, and how, what they can do and what they cannot do. And that's, uh, this is a big part of the uh, complexity we get. And what I really want to see is that we don't get this perception by the, by the users that replication is just uh, fragile. And I think as this is already the case. Users get used to, okay, sometimes a replication break, uh, I'll do restart it, maybe it works, I'll skip, say skip, select, counter, skip, a, and, uh, skip an event, and if it doesn't work, I'll just put in a backup and so on. I think once you get to that uh, stage, users will stop reporting the box, they'll just expect it, and that, I want to avoid that. Yeah. Okay, so, but, so this was about MariaDB is flexible, that makes it complex, and to some extent that gives it this uh, makes it fragile. But there's also some complexity that's not necessary. I just want to mention, uh, talk about the second half here, a new feature that I'm working on, and uh, you're not so good on time. So, so uh, in replication works the following way. We have a bin log, which is effectively a transactional logs. Uh, so all the transactions are written to the bin log. And the problem we have here is that the, the bin log is, is separate from the InnoDB transactional log, or if you're using ARIA or, or RocksDB, their transactional log. And that's not good. It's, uh, it gives a lot of complexity in terms of the logic, but it's also very costly in performance. Uh, and the problem is that if the server crashes, we need to, uh, after the crash, we need to get up in a consistent state. And consistent, it also means that we have to have the same transactions in the bin log that we have in the storage engine, because we could have, if we don't have that guarantee, then we could have that, uh, we have these transactions running, they are in the middle of commit, and then we crash. When we get back up, maybe the transaction was committed in InnoDB, but it's missing from the bin log. Or we could have the other problem that it's, written to the bin log, but now it's missing an InnoDB. And the bin log is what goes on the slave, remember, but InnoDB is what we have on the master, and then we get difference between the slave and the master, and that's very bad, and it's not even visible, and eventually the system will fail a day later for unknown reasons, so. And we can fix this, there's a thing called two-phase commit between the bin log and the InnoDB, but it's really expensive. Uh, in, because we need to f-sync, basically. We need to write, sync to this twice for every commit. But that's what we do now. That's what we do now. And actually, many users, also big users that I talk to, they are disabling durability because it's just too expensive. And that means when they crash, the slave may get out, get out of sync and break. And the solution I'm proposing to this, there's an MDEV, 74705, uh, which is to put the bin log inside the engine. So that just like the engine is handling the, the transactional update of the table spaces, of the table data, it will also handle writing the bin log data. Uh, so uh, in this uh, implementation, a bin log file will now be uh, inside, um, it will be a table space, a new type of table space, InnoDB table space. Uh, and the great thing about that is that I can reduce all the existing InnoDB infrastructure. Marco helped me with that. So, so all the redo logging and the table space uh, buffer pool, uh, the checkpoints inside InnoDB are reused. It's essentially, I actually didn't have to change that at, at all. So, so that's really good, I think, and it's, it makes for a clean implementation. But it's a new. The, the, the downside is that it's a new type of. It's a new format for the bin log and. But is it a new form? Is it that, isn't this basically the same thing as caching the head of the bin binary log in InnoDB before we update the binary log? So, 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 so they are different. And, and if you look at the write-up, there are a list of four different ways to do it. And, 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 and it's, uh, I, I didn't change. Th um, so so the, the events are the same. But the format of the file in this implementation have to be different because it's an InnoDB table space. InnoDB table spaces are page based and there's a page header. So it's not by, bit by bit identical. But it's in terms of what goes into the bin log, it's the same data. But the the, the framing of the data. Uh, but if it's a different files than the undo files, you still do two f syncs because the file f sync is per file. You only f sync the InnoDB redo log. 
So, so this is inside InnoDB? Uh, Everything is inside InnoDB, yes. So it's uh, written to InnoDB table spaces, just like uh, the undo uh, system and uh, uh, data, as I mean, table data table spaces, which are the you, you still keep the legacy bin log. So the legacy bin log, I have to, so, so it's going to be an optional feature. It will, you can enable it, and then you get uh, only the new way of doing the bin logs, and you get these benefits. But uh, we will have to keep the legacy bin log available as an option, or probably the default option initially, just for backwards compatibility. Because we have external tools that are reading the... Yeah, but, but the benefit yeah. is that even, the, even if you have it, you don't need to sync it anymore. Yes. Yes? Yes, Christian, I wonder why you should think it will be legacy, since we have other engines also. Connect. Yeah, maybe um, my English is not so good. I mean, this is the uh, the existing one. But I'm just saying that you can continue using the existing bin log format if you want. But the, and in terms of other engines, the intention is that I'm going to do it for InnoDB, but it should be implemented as a storage engine option. So any engine can implement the bin log if it wants to. And then, of course, if you have a cross, a, a transaction in a different engine can be bid logged into InnoDB, but then you will still have this problem with two different engines. Uh, How yeah. two different bid logs will cooperate if, one, if different engines push them one transaction? You will only have, be able to have one engine implementing the bin log. You have to select InnoDB or RocksDB implementing the bin log when you configure the server. You cannot have split into. Is it, is it so that either you have a very expensive to face commit with two things for production, or you cannot use MySQL bin log? MySQL bin log will, will need to be extended so that it can read. Uh, Directly in the DB table space? So, so it, the, uh, yes, that, that's intention. The intention, they, they will be readable. They will be uh, append only and, and you can read them, yes. So, does it mean that, for example, my sum tables can be logged into the MDB bin log? Yeah, I mean, the data inside the bin log is not is the same. So there will be these uh, SQL statements, that query events, or, or, or row-based events. The data will be... So as you say, you can run MySQL bin log and get the same output. It's just the formatting, the framing of the data. Yeah. Will you also use that to write multiple events in parallel, like the multiple transactions in parallel? The, yes, so that's uh, at least uh, not in the first version, but, but the goal is to be able to do that, yes. So there's... Uh, Design write up, and there's a prototype implementation uh, on GitHub. And I'll, I'll, I'll just so I did some initial benchmarking, which I want to show just to see uh, the impact. And this is uh, Suspense. I actually used Mark Callahan, uh, did a lot of testing in, in this way on, on MariaDB and other databases. And he has some scripts for Suspense, so I used those. Uh, uh, this is on a server, a uh, Hetzner server, which has a fast disk. So it's actually uh, already pretty fast. Uh, I mean, it's the best case for the old bin log, and still, so, so what you see here in the graphs is that the red one is uh, existing implementation, and the green one is uh, the new prototype, and these are different uh, suspend write benchmarks. And you see that there's, uh, this is a queries per second, basically, when you run, and we see that when we, uh, so in this case, we are running on, uh, uh, with f-sync enabled, so durable, so there's one f-sync, two f-syncs for every commit in the, in, in the base case, and then there's just one in, in, in ODB. So it's not just one, just one F-sync, but it's an optimized single uh, transaction log. So we see that we have like two to three times to speed so, up. So right? what's the difference with, with eight? Because the, the red one is the, actually the red one is always the base. So this is relative course per yeah. second. Yeah. Yeah, so red, red, red is always one. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and, and I didn't analyze, had some time as well, but basically the, the ones that are better are the ones that are doing mostly writes and not so many reads because the more writes you do, the more effect this has. So this is what, yes? Different numbers are different in bench benchmarks, but you don't yeah. know we, which one is which. I know, of course, but... Uh, no, I mean, you, you don't have it like just some difference. Yeah, and, 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 and you can, uh, we can you can just ask me afterwards if you want to see it, and maybe, yeah. Uh, so these are the different, uh, 10 different writes in, in Mark uh, Callahan's uh, uh, suspense, uh, uh, normal suspense scripts. So. If you, but, but what if you don't uh, enable the, the F-Syncs? What if you're running non-durable? I wanted to see if, we, now we are writing a different form, we're writing to the InnoDB table space and also the InnoDB redo log. I just wanted to see that we're not any worse. And actually, in even this case, where we don't have any F-Syncs, there's zero F-Syncs in both cases, we still have a, a speed up because we don't have to, to, um, 
Yeah, I don't have to like the split, well, first the bin log and then the inner DB, and still, uh, there's still the two phase could be, even though it's no F sync. Just the X axis mean exactly like number eight on this slide is the same as number eight on the previous slide? Yes, yes. Uh, and and the really dramatic, uh, but, but so, so this is about the speed up when you're running with a durability enabled. That's actually. Uh, some people want durability and some actually don't need it, but most people want crash safe. You want to be that the server crashes, you don't have to delete it and start from a backup. And the problem with the existing bin log implementation is that you have to enable if sync to be uh, crash safe. If you don't enable this if sync, then if you crash, you can get out of sync, as I explained in the other slide. So this is where you get a really dramatic speed up. If you have some implication where you don't need durability, you can just disable uh, the f sync and now with this new implementation, you will be crash safe uh, without uh, without uh, enabling F things. And this is even this is on a, remember this is on a very uh, fast SSD. So this is the best case if you're running on slower disk or if you have a network attack storage, it's going to be even worse. This F thing over here. Yeah. Do you think how it applies to semi uh, sync with recovering crashes and failover? Uh, yeah, I, I did think a little bit, but mostly it's the same because 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 the the, the bin log format is, is the same. It's different, but the things on top are, are different. So that's one difference. And currently in 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 semi-sync replication, we have two options. It's called after commit or after sync. So when do you check? When do you commun When do you wait for the? You, you can do that after you sync the bin log, or you can do it after you commit where you sync the InnoDB. But now it's only one thing, so it's the same. So you only have after commit. You only have the after commit. Yes. Or it's the same because you sync and commit together. Yeah. Yeah. But it's something to. Well, it's not really the same thing then. Why not? But, uh, you commit before the slave with the action. Yeah, we always commit before the slave. That's why it's called after sync because we sync the bin log, then it's committed in the master. That's a different issue. That is, when do you send the, when do you send, this is not about similar thing, this when do you send the event to the slave? Yeah. And you can only send the event to the slave after it's committed on the master. Because otherwise the slave could see something and then, the, but maybe that's not what you're thinking. Yeah, but you don't return to the client before you put. That's a different issue, Africa. that's the same. That's, that's, that's yeah, not the same. Uh, I think that we, in this, uh, the master, we send it a query and we wait with committing before uh, until the slave says that we we commit we, we got the data the, the slave doesn't commit but they got the data yeah the slave of course doesn't commit the slave will make the slave yeah but I mean, we don't do commit before where the slave says i have no but then, but then you get uh the yeah no uncommitted transaction what you okay. say no we of course we commit uh, no we don't we, we don't we don't do it now yeah so so now first we prepare the in engine, then we sync it to the bin log. Once it's synced to the bin log, it's committed. Even if we crash, we're going to recover it. Then after that, we ask the slave for, for, to acknowledge that it has it. And only after the slave acknowledges that it has it, then we return to the client that, uh, that is committed. I think that's how it works. I think we did it. Yeah, so, yeah so, so there are some other things that can be done, but this is for later. But I think we are all ready over time, so... Um, how's the time, Kai? Okay, then... Uh, uh, so, in conclusion, uh, I think uh, what really makes MariaDB replication stand out is the uh, flexibility, as I said. And uh, this also causes some unavoidable complexity, which has a tendency to make it fragile. But there are also some things that make it uh, fragile, there's some complexity that is not needed. So let's get rid of that and uh, try to, I think the main challenge, main challenge for replication is to, to, to basically battle this, uh, keep the flexibility, but let's remove yeah. <laughs> some as much of fragility as we can. I mean, back to the machine, so we had this uh, trick with uh, truncating the binary log based on something, the role, for example. You cannot truncate the binary log if it's inside the you know, Okay, uh, so I didn't think about that concretely, but yes, you can truncate it inside in the B. Yes, yes. I mean, you will only do that. You do that on crash recovery, right? Well, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, just it's a it's a file you modify. It. 
Yes, well, you can do that. Yeah, I haven't implemented. I haven't implemented that. But it's already committed. How you you cannot truncate. You can't remove from one of a committed transaction already. So 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 what? Yes, I mean so what happens is that the bin log is append. I think we can do. I can maybe we could take it afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, definitely possible. So so once once the in, in B has once the transaction is committed, the data in the file is just normal data. And you shouldn't modify it while the server is running, but for sure, when it starts up, you can do crash recovery and, and truncate it. You can do that, yeah. Do you know well, this kind of a Do you know case. this from the and problem with uh, semi sync and uh, I think it was and recovery and uh, failover and stuff? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> the number of problems with that, I'm very well aware of that. Yes, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. The MariaDB Foundation is the global contact point for collaboration on MariaDB server. Our work is made possible thanks to the support of our sponsors.